um, unfinished thoughts, if you will. Um, so this session, we're, we're delighted to host that with, with Cassie Robinson, uh, who's the senior head of the UK portfolio at the National Lottery Community Fund, uh, also the co-founder of the Point People, Faculty of State of Change, and a fellow at the Institute of Innovation and Public Purpose at the UCL. Uh, there's a lot of great titles. So delighted and honored to have her with us. Uh, and she's going to be you know, hosting a workshop on the stewarding loss project and, and subject, um, which she tells us uh, is, a, is a work in progress. Um, but we like uh, the fact that she's here with us to work out loud and to share what she's found so far in this very important topic uh, and rarely talked about when it comes to innovation, um, where we tend to focus on the ideas and the creativity of creation rather than uh, closing things down. Um, so without further ado, Cassie, over to you. Um, look, really looking forward to the workshop um, and to joining. Thank you for hosting. Great, thank you, Jesper, and hello, everybody. Um, I am now gonna share my screen and turn my camera off. And hopefully you can now see my screen. Yes, we can. Good. Um, so yeah, thank you um, for being here, especially UK folk who are up far too early. Um, as Jesper said, this is um, a workshop about um, a project that we're now calling Stewarding Loss. I was going to sort of introduce myself, but I think Jesper did a good job of that. Um, so just, I'm going to just quickly run through the agenda. Um, we are going to start by me sort of introducing the work. Um, we've then got a few different exercises, um, some of which will be for you to sort of reflect on your own and some where we will put you into breakout rooms and into groups. Um, and then we're going to sort of do a reflection at the end and then that will be it. And I just wanted to say, you know, if you don't want to like go into the rooms and you'd actually prefer to do some of this on your own, that is also fine. Um, I, I, it, is, it is a workshop, um, but I know that actually that can be harder to engage in when you're when you're um, doing things like this online. So yeah, do, don't feel you have to join a room um, at all. And it seems to have stopped presenting. Is that just, has it got a different view back up of my, or is it on presenter side still? Yeah, we're seeing like exactly what you're seeing. Okay. Um, so it's not on present view. No, it's gone to the wrong side, sorry. So yeah, I've, you know, we've been starting all of these sessions that we've been running over the last um, sort of three or four weeks by first sort of wanting to acknowledge what this work is happening in the shadow of. Um, so I just, I did want to acknowledge, you know, whilst we are here to talk about organisational loss and the idea of organisational endings, you know, there is a huge amount of human loss happening now. Um, and, you know, obviously added to this is, is, is everything that's going on sparked by the murder in America and then the kind of ripple effects of that around the world. So it just feels really inappropriate to not have that front and centre at the beginning of this workshop. So, yeah, so, so what is this, what is this work? Um, so this started off, and, and some of you will already know this, but this started off as a provocation that I wrote last year um, for this idea of a farewell fund. And that, that was because I had um, a sense that there is actually a lot of civil society in the UK and in other parts of the world, it might be known more as the third sector or the charitable sector. Um, but just that there's a lot of civil society that is, you know, is struggling and, and struggling in some ways because, you know, of austerity um, and things like that. But, but some of civil society struggling because actually maybe it is no longer fit for purpose. And I had this kind of fantasy that if there was a, a dedicated fund that people could apply to, 
um, to resource them being able to close down well, um, would that actually sort of see a sort of sigh of relief almost for some people if you created a, enough of a transition that people felt able to kind of put their hand up and say, you know, actually this is not working anymore. Um, you know, would that actually be a good thing to do? And, and as sort of Jesper said in the introduction, um, so really feeling like we spend so much time focusing on starting things. And I think especially in, you know, what people might call more systemic work um, or systems change work, for me, the elephant in the room always with that work is nobody talks about the fact that for, for systems to shift and to transition and to change, you also do need to, um, some things need to end, that, that sort of cycle. Um, and, and I just felt like that was, was not really being looked at. Um, but, and, and again, I was focusing very much on civil society, so not public sector. Um, it, it was just on civil society. So um, we had this idea of the farewell fund and then received some funding from the Paul Hamlin Foundation. Um, and it was also sort of based on this idea from the Bacana to Loop model, um, who talk, you know, in their model, they have in the sort of middle of the screen um, where they have death and composting. So this idea of hospice work and death and composting. And I suppose this is about an old a sort of dominant system um, no longer being like either good for the world or the right fit for the world and, an, and a new system needing to emerge. And I guess in this current context, we might think of it as, you know, what was the pre-COVID world that we lived in? And, you know, is that something that we ever really want to return to? Obviously there are things about it that were essential, but there's so much um, that maybe wasn't working for so many people. And, and we have an opportunity now to be maybe strengthening and investing in an alternative system that might start to emerge. Um, but in doing so, what what is the what what needs hospicing? And I suppose why we then changed the framing of this to not be called the farewell fund, and we're now talking about stewarding loss, is because the reality is there will be lots of organisations that actually have no choice in this now, and that 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 is going to be a real tragedy because there are lots of civil society organisations that won't survive that we would want to survive. But it does also potentially give an opportunity to think about which organisations maybe um, have had their time. And, um, you know, this quote from Nick Cave, I I'm still not sure about the word discard. It sounds maybe a bit disrespectful. But, you know, we are at a time where we're thinking across our lives and then, you know, maybe within our communities and in our and about our the sort of landscape of organizations in civil society like what what do we want to preserve and what maybe yeah what maybe has had its time so that's the work um oh i'm gonna go back sorry jumping all over the place i'm gonna go back to this and leave this on here for now so in terms of the the project so far um, we changed the ref we, you know, we changed the framing to about, be about stewarding loss. Um, and I think I've got Iona on the call who's part of the team. There's a small team of us doing this. And I think we um, were unsure whether to start this work at this time. Um, but actually, after a few weeks, it became really evident that it's probably going to be needed more than ever because there is a lot of loss around and there is there is more loss coming in terms of organizations um so we we sort of embarked on it and we've been doing a set of what we've been calling like loss circles where we've been inviting people to come in the first three to talk about just like what brought them to the circle like why are they interested in this topic um and then we've started to do more thematic ones um specifically looking at things like well what makes an ending 
work better, you know, or feel better? Um, what are the kind of rituals that might support organizational ending? So we've started to do more thematic focused ones. Um, we've also started to do interviews. So we're sort of interviewing across a range of different um, practice from people that have direct experience of ending an organization through to drawing on like expertise of people that might work in end of life care and hosp actual hospices um, to understand some of the kind of psychology, psychology and sort of behaviors around um, supporting loss um, and what makes loss more bearable. Um, through to people that have experience of like ritual work. So we're trying to sort of draw on the um, expertise of a very diff a very broad range of um, people and organizations to inform the work um, and, and then doing things like this um, as a way of just trying to start to build up a picture of, you know, what is needed at this time in terms of stewarding loss what what might um, a kind of you know what what would a growing body of work work look like um, that we could start to use and and the sector like different organisations in civil society could actually draw on um, and because the demand has been so high um, we are also um, potentially getting some further funding and it's going to sort of grow with a bigger team um, and develop as a piece of work so if that's something that any of you are interested in please do get in touch at the like afterwards as well um, so yeah and I'm just thinking of like some of the things that I've been surprised by just in what we've done so far other than the demand and maybe this isn't surprising but you know, it, it feels like this is actually a space that people really want to um, see like happen. Like, it feels like people don't have anywhere at the moment to think about and anticipate organizational loss. Um, in our first circle, I was particularly struck by actually a lot of anger and, and that was very much directed towards this idea that there's there, there's already it's already evident that there's some organizations that are really trying to hold on that actually probably have had their time and this idea that if if some of the establishment isn't willing to kind of move out of the way um what does that stop like um in terms of like birthing new things um so this idea that that cycle of like you know at, at some point it's very natural to think for things to no longer need to exist but people sort of holding on to their existence and that, and that yeah there was a lot of anger in that session um i think there's a question for us about how do we hold the space to support sort of personal loss but keep this distinct around organizational loss so can you separate out those two things um we know that there's sort of personal loss involved in anyone that's going to be involved in the story of an organization ending, but obviously people have personal loss and grief in their life. And so we, we, but that's not what this space is about, but we can't ignore that. So we've, we've been sort of trying to hold some of those tensions too, but I guess what we're particularly focused on is the kind of the intent of designing for, this this process like how do you actually what's a framework how what do you wrap around um organizational loss so i'm going to shut up for a minute now and hope that you can all see the chat on um on the zoom and i'd just love you each to take a few minutes to write in the chat about what organizational loss you're anticipating in your local community or within civil society so that might be just walking around your local town and you can see things that might not reopen again or it might be that you're right on the front line of hearing about charities that are struggling to, to survive or but i would love to just see you share in the in the chat 
um, sort of what you're anticipating. <laughs>